Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to the GDTF Fixture Builder Skills video series. In this video, we're going to be going over the Geometry section. The Geometry tab has three main sections. The Geometry and Model section, the Properties section, and the 3D Interactive Viewport. Let's start in the Geometry and Model section. A GDTF fixture follows a parent-child kinematic chain structure. This palette allows you to add, remove, and reorder top level and child geometry of the structure. Child geometry will move or rotate with its parent geometry when making adjustments with any of the controls like translate or rotate. The eye changes the visibility of an object, the red X will delete the object, and the triangle to the left of the name will collapse or expand the kinematic chain. To add additional geometry, check the plus button next to the add child geometry or the Add Top Level Geometry. The Top Level Geometry is the only geometry that can have a DMX mode. You will see this noted by the DMX icon. This means that all parameters of this DMX mode will only affect the children of this Top Level Geometry, as they are all linked together. If you need another Top Level Geometry, it will have to be associated to a new DMX mode. We will go into more detail later in the video series. The Fixture Builder allows you to duplicate geometry of any object in the kinematic chain via the navigation bar. This menu has three options. The first is to duplicate the selection. This will create a duplicate of whatever you have selected. Next is the Multiple Duplication command. This will allow you to create multiple duplications of the geometry that you have selected. Last, the Collapse All control is just an easy way to collapse the kinematic chain to make it easy to read. Let's go into each command and see how to use them. Duplicate selection will create a copy of whatever geometry you have selected, as well as any children of that geometry. With the yoke of the fixture selected, we'll run the duplicate selection command. As you can see, the yoke was duplicated and it was placed at the original. You can also see that the children, the head, and the beam were also created and linked correctly. The multiple duplication command allows you to make a selected number of copies. This can be handy when creating a fixture with multiple emitters. First, you'll select the geometry that you wish to duplicate in the geometry window, and then run the multiple duplication command. This will open the duplicate selection multiple times dialog box. In the copies field, add the number of copies you wish to make. The duplicates will be added to the kinematic chain at the same level as the original geometry. All you have to do now is position the geometry where it needs to go. The final control, the Collapse All, just collapses the entire kinematic chain to make it easier to read. Below the geometry palette is the Properties palette, and it will allow you to adjust the selected geometry. It has the following controls. Name field for the name of the geometry. X, Y, and Z position fields to precisely place the geometry. X, Y, and Z rotation fields to allow you to fine tune the rotation of the selected geometry. Geometry type allows you to choose the type of geometry that you're going to be using. The choices are normal geometry for just a normal piece of geometry, axis geometry, this is geometry that's going to have an axis point such as the yoke. Beam filter, this is for geometry that will have a beam filter in it. Color filter, this is for geometry that will have a color filter. Gobo filter, this is for geometry that will contain a gobo filter. Shape filter, this is for geometry that will contain a shape filter. Beam, this is for geometry that will contain a beam filter. Reference, this is to reference back to geometry that has already been described. Media server camera, this is geometry that's linked back to a media server camera object. Media server layer. This is geometry that's linked to a media server layer. Media server master. This is the geometry that's linked to a media server master layer or the main control layer of a media server. And display. This would be the display screen on the fixture. Next is linked model. This will give you the ability to link between another piece of geometry in the model that has already been created. Last, the length, width, and height fields allow you to change the size of the selected geometry. Note that if you choose beam geometry, you will have the following additional fields. Lamp type. This allows you to choose the type of lamp. 
could be an LED, tungsten, or an arc source. Power, this is the power usage and wattage of the fixture. Luminous flux, this is the luminous flux measured at the fixture. The color temperature of the fixture, this is done in Kelvin. The type, this could be a spot, wash, or none. Beam angle is the beam angle in degrees. Field angle is the field angle in degrees. Beam diameter is the radius of the beam at the starting point, or the lens. Last is the CRI field. This is where you can place the CRI, or the color rendering index, of the beam. Note that when you place beam geometry, the light will always emit in the Z direction. You will see a yellow arrow that shows the direction the light will emit from the beam. Last, we will go over the 3D interactive viewport. In the viewport, you can move geometry. It'll be highlighted in yellow when it's selected with the red, green, and blue control handles. This is also where you can see the yellow arrow that we talked about earlier that shows the direction the beam emits. A left click in the viewport will allow you to rotate around the origin. This is also the insertion point of the fixture. A right mouse click will allow you to pan around in the viewport, and the scroll wheel will allow you to zoom in and out. First, let's take a look at the three axis move control. The blue arrow allows you to move the selected geometry and its associated children along the z-axis. The green arrow along the y-axis and the red arrow along the x-axis. Selecting one of the red, green, or yellow squares will allow you to move the object along that plane. Finally, the yellow box in the center allows you to move the geometry around the screen plane. To rotate the geometry in the document, you will have to change the control from Translate to Rotate in the drop-down menu. This is also where you can turn Snapping on and off. Snapping allows you to snap objects together at their bounding box. When the control is in Rotate mode, you will find four circles around the selected geometry. The blue circle will allow you to rotate the selected geometry, as well as its children, just like in Translate mode, around the z-axis. The red will allow you to rotate around the x-axis, the green will allow you to rotate around the y-axis, and the yellow will allow you to rotate around the screen plane. This is the way you are currently looking at the fixture on the screen. Finally, let's go over how to add geometry. After clicking the plus button to add geometry at either the child or top level, you will be given the Add Geometry dialog box. Let's take a look at the controls in this dialog. First, we have a name field. This is to give the geometry that you're going to add a name. The Use File Dimension control will tell the fixture builder to use the file dimensions in the file that you're uploading. This will disable the length, width, and height controls just below it. The length, width, and height fields allow you to set the size of the geometry. Geometry type functions the same as it does in the Properties palette. Note, if you choose Beam, you will get extra controls again. Last is the Select Model section. This allows you to choose a 3DS file to upload to the builder, choose from default geometry types that are already listed, or add an empty piece of geometry. The workflow for this dialog is to first select the model, then give it a name. Then, select the geometry type. Note, if you choose Beam, again, this will give you extra controls just like it did in the Properties palette. Then finally, click OK. If you have chosen to add a 3DS file, this is where you'll be prompted to select the file to upload it. Thanks for watching, and in the next video, we're going to start building an example fixture.